Uh, hello everybody, I'm Inspector Don Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N, Calgary Police Service Major Crime Section. Uh, we have charged four men in connection with two murders and an ongoing drug investigation. On Saturday, October 4th, 2016, Jason Quinn Antonio, 39, was found deceased outside his home in the 300 block of Menorah Crescent Northeast after reports of a shooting. Following Antonio's death, a complex investigation ensued involv involving numerous units within the CPS. At approximately 10.45 a.m. on Wednesday, May 27th, 2015, police were called to an office building located in the 10,300 block of Bonaventure Drive Southeast due to gunshots being fired. One man was transported to hospital where he later died. The victim was identified as Taylor John Zanoni, 23 of Calgary. Investigators had information that led them to believe both murders were connected to a group of individuals who were heavily involved in drug activity. As a result of a joint investigation between the CPS and the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, Orange County, California Resident Office, and the Tri-Cities Washington Task Force Group, arrests were made Friday, July 15th, 2016, during what was believed to be an attempt to bring drugs into Canada. A total of 14.2 kilograms of cocaine and 3.2 kilograms of methamphetamine were seized. On Tuesday, July 19th, 2016, the CPS executed a number of search warrants, search warrants on residences and businesses believed to be connected to this investigation. During the execution of a search in the 300 block of 3rd Street Southeast, two CPS officers came into contact with an unknown substance and required medical attention from EMS. The members were taken to hospital for precautionary measures and later released. The scene is currently being held and the RCMP clandestine laboratory enforcement response team has been called to assist with the search and subsequent decontamination. The Calgary Fire Department EMS are assisting. There is expected to be significant disruption in the area today as the teams work to remove any unknown substances and render that area safe. There's no imminent danger to the public at this time. As a result of this investigation, the following people have been charged. Gersh, Gersharanjit, or Gary Parmar, 32 of Calgary, has been charged with two counts of first degree murder in connection with the deaths of Antonio and Zanoni. He is also charged with one count each of conspiracy to import cocaine and proceeds of crime. Joshua Lloyd Okabe, 30 of Calgary, is charged with two counts of first degree murder also in connection with the deaths of Antonio and Zanoni. He is also charged with one count of cons uh, conspiracy to import cocaine. Rico King, 44 of Calgary, is charged with two counts of conspiracy to import cocaine, two counts of possession for the purpose of trafficking, and one count of proceeds of crime. And William King, 71, father of Rico King, is charged with one count of conspiracy to import cocaine and all four will appear in court on Friday, July 22nd, 2016. I'll attempt to answer any questions you have in relation to uh, this file. Can you talk more about the exposure of the officers at the house? Is there a lab in there or something like that? What's the details of the uh, I don't believe it was a lab. I believe there was several uh, containers, plastic containers of powder that the officers were taking the lids off to see what was inside these containers and the one container, whatever was in it, the substance uh, seemed to initially overwhelm the officers. So they've, they've been treated, have been released, and are recovering. Containers of powder for drug manufacturing? Am I making too much belief there, or is that? Well, I'm not sure. That's what the RCMP clear team from Edmonton will come down and figure that out. Then we'll have a better idea what that was. Can you expand a little more on the communication you have? That's a lot of jurisdiction. Yeah, it, it is. Like? It is. Like well, it's part of ongoing relationships we have between the CPS and law enforcement partners internationally. So we're in contact on an ongoing basis. Sometimes there's investigations and information that can be moved forward to the point of charges, and sometimes it's just sharing of information and intelligence. But 
that's all part of relationships that we maintain on an ongoing basis. So based on the work they had done prior to your work, is that what led the warrant to the warrants being executed in Calgary? Is it all that information you received in the No, I don't believe it's a matter of us receiving information. It's a matter of a joint partnership investigationally targeting and drug activity internationally. But all the suspects were arrested in Calgary? Like what were they arrested in the States? I'm not, I don't know specifically on the arrests made uh, in the U.S., I can only speak to the ones here. Uh, the DEA would, would have to speak to that, and it wouldn't be fair for me to comment on, on their end of the investigation. Where were the, uh, the drugs that were going to be smuggled? That was found, that was in the States? That's where the arrest was made? I believe so, correct. And that yes. was in Washington? Uh, I'm not sure specifically. Uh, somewhere in the Tri-County area, I believe. And this... The, the drug, the, the bust of the, the catching the drugs being smuggled, that led to these murder charges eventually, or were these murder charges going to be coming around the corner anytime anyway because of your investigations? Well, it's all part of the same investigation. So the, the, the violence that we see often is related to, to drug activity in the city. And to get the drugs to sell, they have to come from somewhere. So it's all, it's all part of the same, same investigation, just multiple components to it. And both the, the guys that were killed, stuck, the, the charges stuck from, they were both believed to be involved in the drug trade, correct? I believe so. Speaking just of sheer numbers, dent wise, what does it do to Calgary? It's a lot of cocaine. Uh, it's a lot of cocaine. Uh, it will provide some disruption, but inevitably somebody is going to step up and try to fill the gap. So we'll keep pressure on that and, and continue to try to combat not only the violence but uh, that's associated with drug activity but the drug activity itself which is responsible for a substantial amount of crime and not just in calgary but everywhere